Welcome. Today I'm doing a deck tech on. A deck I like to call Mill Grow or Mill Aggro. Let's get to the deck. Starting off with creatures. Got four Jace's Phantasm. He's a one mana, one one. When an opponent has ten or more cards in their graveyard, he gets plus four, plus four. He also has flying. Good card when it can be activated. Two of Right of Precinct Six. He's only a two of because some decks don't have creatures. So sometimes he's always in some matchups he's always a two mana one one, which is terrible. But then there's you run into matchups like elves and he could just be a two mana ten ten, a two mana eleven eleven, and that's sweet. So two of main deck. Two more on the side. Good card when it's good. When it's bad, it's so bad. Two of Eldrazi Sky Spawner. Good to have some extra bodies out there. Um, in the form of the Scion token when the Sky Spawner comes into play. Two one flyer. Can get in some damage. Can put a reasonable clock on an opponent. Four of Seagate Oracle is in here for the same reason it's in a lot of blue base decks. It's a good 1-3 body that has the upside of digging you too deeper into your deck. Helps me find lands, helps me find action. Or of Liliana Spectre. This card is a house in this deck. The strategy of this deck, instead of trying to constantly just take cards off the top of my opponent's library like a typical mill deck until they got nothing to draw, this deck is a lot more focused on removal spells and discard spells to make my opponent's hand empty so I can do whatever I want with the creatures that I have. And a again, a 2-1 flyer for 3 is a good enough rate to be able to put a clock on your opponent. The ability to pick it back up and play it again, potentially mid-game, can help make sure your opponent doesn't have any cards left. Especially when you pair it with Okaiba Gain Shinobi. This 5 mana, 3 2, when it deals combat damage to a player, that player discards 2 cards. It also has Ninjutsu, which this card does see fringe play in some hand disruption decks. Not nearly as much play as the, the big daddy ninja, the ninja of the deep hours that everybody plays in the blue fairies lists. This card, super relevant in this deck, lets me be able to pick up the Liliana Spectre, lets me be able to recast the Sky Spawner, Seagate Oracle. Moving on to my Incident and Sorcery package, I have a 2 of Artful Dodge. Is mostly in here to help me finish out games through chump blockers. A right of Precinct 6 can get really huge, but if your opponent has a ton of elves in front of you, you're never going to get through. This makes sure that you can. The ability to flash it back on the same turn and be able to make two creatures unblockable as opposed to like the rebound spell that only lets me do it once one creature per turn, this gives me the flexibility of being able to hit two of my guys on the same turn. Does get boarded out a lot if I'm running into more control matchups that aren't running a lot of creatures. This is a really relevant card to help me finish games. Four of Thought Scour. The main real actual mill card in this deck, but it's mostly in here because it's a one mana cantrip. Instant speed lets me draw and hopefully hit a creature and get me two cards closer to Jace's Phantasm being able to be activated as the 5 5 flyer. Four of Disfigure to deal with early threats, small threats. The majority of what I'm worried about is happening between turns one and five. After that, I can deploy a reasonable amount of board to be able to take care of what I need to take care of. Four of Counter Spells for when you just need to tell your opponent no. And finally, three Paranoid Delusions. This is the other actual mill card in the deck it sets up the most aggro start you can have with the jace's phantasm the main thing we're trying to get with this deck is not your opponent to zero cards in library it looks like a mill deck but 
it's trying to beat face. It's trying to go above blockers, through blockers, and just get your opponent dead. To do that, we need a, a critical mass of cards, but typically that's only 10 to 15 cards in their graveyard. So we need to help it a little bit, but we're more concerned with getting it out of their hands than their libraries. Moving on to other spells, we just have a two of Bone Splitter as a backup plan. Sometimes your opponent just is reluctant to let 10 cards end up in their yard. They will, after boarded games, bring in the graveyard hate just to keep their own graveyards cleaned up. I've seen people turn Relic of Progenitus on themselves. I've seen people turn Bajuka Bogs on themselves. It's hilarious when it happens. But you need a backup plan to make sure that you're not, you're not just stuck with a 1-1 Jace's Phantasm in a 20-turn clock. Moving on to lands, I have 22 lands in the deck. Two of Ash Barons to help fix my mana. Two of Baron Moor and Lonely Sandbar to help protect versus flooding out. Three Demir Aqueducts to be able to pick up the moors or the sandbars and cycle them away mid to late game. They're good lands. I don't like running more than three because they can be a little clunky. Four of Dismal Backwater. Dual lands. This deck is very intensive when it comes to converted mana costs and double blue for the counter spells. Double black for the ninjas if you do sadly have to cast them at full cost instead of ninjutsuing them out. And also the Liliana Spectres need two black mana as well. Or backwater. Two of Radiant Fountain. This is a concession to burn and heavy aggro decks. Again, being able to pick them up with a Demir Aqueduct can help get two, four, six life in a game versus a burn deck and sometimes that's all you need to be able to stabilize and finish them off four islands three swamps i've been working a lot on this mana base i don't know if i should go up more ash barons i i, I think i'm in a good spot there hasn't been but maybe one game that i played where i couldn't hold up counter spell when i really really needed to but it did turn out okay 22 lands does feel like enough for when I'm basically topping out at 4 mana. Moving on to the sideboard. 2 of Hydroblast to deal with the red burn matchups and other red matchups. 2 of Echoing Truths to deal with tokens, um, enchantments I might need to get rid of for a turn or two. And two of Miss Bane Shinobi. Miss Bane Shinobi is another ninja they can ninja to out for one blue mana. It has the effect of being able to return a target creature to its owner's hand. But the main thing this is in here for is to kind of work like a vapor snag effect to be able to rebuy my Liliana Spectre and replay it. So to make discard an extra card, the one blue man is great for that. And after that, he's mostly just a chump blocker. But I needed a body version of it. I couldn't just do it with, you know, Vapor Snag or Unsummon or anything like that. I wanted to have a creature. And extra ninja tricks, always fun. Two of Duress to bring in for the spell heavy matchups, removal heavy matchups, counter heavy matchups. The format has gotten really diverse since Iconic Masters hits the street. So you got to have a lot of sideboard hate for a lot of different decks. Two of Chainer's Edict, try to deal with the Boggles type matchups, the Hexproof matchups, or the things that the Disfigures really can't get rid of, but it's not really a creature heavy matchup. Two of Doomblade for that targeted removal for taking care of large things. Two more Rites of Precinct 6, because in some matchups like Versus Elves, they're just absurd. 
and one of Agony Warp to deal with that 3 mana 2 3 protection from model colored spells. Doesn't come up often you run into decks playing him, but Black White Pestilence is fun, and I have came across it a few times. I've also seen it in some interesting Boros variants and life gain variants built around Seeker of the Way. So Agony Warp could be a different card, but I wanted something to be able to deal with the protection from monocolors guy. All right, that's the deck. Thanks for watching. You can follow me on Twitter at GeekLukeG. This is Couch Troll Brewing.